what's good about the randomly relate reverse ranch no hate so look it's rumored that Floyd Mayweather is supposed to train Deontay Wilder. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. Like I said, it's rumored, and I haven't heard all, a whole lot of talk about this, but I've heard peeps of it from certain, you know, very di different people, not a whole lot, and it was talked about. Here's the reality, though. If he gets Floyd Mayweather to train him, Roy Jones Jr. And it's rumored that even George Foreman. So I know George made a comment that he would train him, I think on his Twitter account or something like that, but I'll have an Instagram something. But it doesn't matter who he gets to train him. Um, if he's not going to listen, what does it do just to have a different trainer? If he's not going to implement these things that he learned into the in, into his his you know his fight when he get into the ring into into his fights, he already has Mark Breland. Um, Sometimes people will take orders from other people that they won't take orders from. Like they they won't take it from him; but they'll take it from this person. Maybe that's the case. Um, Mark Breland was a good fighter, and if he's not pr progressing with Mark Breland. What does it matter that he bring all these other trainers in? Um, now, personally, what I think at 34 years of age and you've been fighting this way forever and getting away with it. Um, he even had an interview where he said he's been getting away with doing a lot of, you know, lack of training and just doing certain things that he's not supposed to do and getting away with it. And he said, now it's back to the basics. I don't actually know what he meant by that. Because I didn't see any 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 progression in his game. I didn't see anything. Um, Buddy McGirt made a comment. Deontay just needed to learn a small amount of things, a few things, something like something to that effect. I think Buddy McGirt just wanted to be the guy on assignment to train him. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Because uh, Deontay Wilder needs to learn and work on a lot of things. I mean, Deontay Wilder. First, he doesn't even know how to parry punches. He doesn't even know how to parry a shot. His jab is only just to, like, keep a little distance to just, you know, why he's trying to figure out how to get to you. And basically, he doesn't throw his jab with any purpose. He doesn't really use the score points, follow up. When he throws a jab, usually pretty much you know the right hand is coming right behind it. He doesn't throw... I mean, it, this is just a lot. The most that you see Deontay do with his jab, um, when he throws his jab, he literally, like, like like against Fury, he was throwing it to the body at times too. He was just trying to keep distance. That's it. He was just trying to keep distance. He wasn't setting anything up with his jab. Usually what he does, he literally hops in with the, with the jab and throw the right over. So literally when he jumps in, it's like he'll throw it, and then he reaches over it. Like he's in the air. Literally. And bam. So his body weight is behind the shot. Um, he wasn't able to do any of that against, against Fury. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it's so easy to outbox Deontay. Because he can't box. He doesn't know how to fight. He really he really does not know how to box, man. He he basically has been getting away with minimal with a min with a minimal skill set because of the the competition he was fighting. Luis Ortiz, I don't see him the way everybody else does. I think he's decent. I don't think he's all that skillful like everybody says. Like He's a, a, a decent, basic fighter. Nothing special about Luis Ortiz. He was just better than all the other guys that Deontay fought. Look at Luis Ortiz's resume and what did he do that's so great. I mean, look at his opponents. So, I mean, at the end of the day, Deontay started calling him the boogeyman and people just started catching on. Deontay is the one started calling him the boogeyman. Nobody else. Deontay is the one who said that. And everybody else started calling him the boogeyman. And he's claiming no one wanted to fight Ortiz. Whatever, man. Um, Back to Deontay. He doesn't know how to parry shots. He doesn't know how to slip a shot, roll under. He doesn't know how to do any of that. He just leans back. He pulls his hands back, puts his hands up and pull back. He has no footwork. His footwork is non-existent. I remember when he fought Romain Stavern, and he got the title. 
and they were talking about uh they were talking about Deontay Wilder has improved. He's throwing this, he's you know, mixing up to the body, his footwork. What footwork? He walks back in a straight line. He can't move and dance like Ali, like like Anthony Joshua, like Roy Joe. He he doesn't have that. He's never had that. He just walks straight backwards, literally. And his hands is by his waist. Um, he doesn't throw combinations at all. He throws one hard shot, one hard shot. He just tries to intimidate you with the shot. So even if it misses, it's like, whoa, that was a little handed. You know, to get in your head. The only time he really throws flurries is when he, you know, when he lands something, he, you know, gets you hurt or, throw he at you, or think he has you hurt. And he throw those wild windmill shots. He doesn't throw flurries. He doesn't, he doesn't know how to do any of that. He doesn't set traps. He doesn't throw combinations. Like I said, he doesn't have that purpose of let me fake up top, faint, bam, into the body, come up to the head, you know. He doesn't do any of those things. So, basically, what Deontay does is very easy for him to get outpointed. He waits and waits and waits for you to make a mistake. And with his right hand and what he's done so far, him and his team believed that's all he needed. And even though I, I'm, I, I believe deep down inside, Mark Breland probably wanted him, to, pretty much wanted him to learn more, display more. Um, when you've been fighting one way for for so long, what is he gonna do different? You're gonna go back to your natural instincts. I don't care. It's just like, like I'm a southpaw. I learned at a young age to fight southpaw and orthodox. It's just like learning a language, man. You learn languages so much easier when you're, when you're younger. The older you get, it's just, I, I don't know. It's just certain things are just harder. And everybody's different. But I don't see, Deontay doesn't have a, 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 a high ring IQ. He just doesn't seem like he's interested in adding anything to his game than what he already has. So what does it matter if Floyd Mayweather comes in? If he, if he listens to Floyd, if, if Floyd could get him to actually, actually listen. But you know that it's just like you can look at Chavez. For one, right? Chavez tried. Chavez tried to, you know, get some boxing and then start moving around after he lost to Frankie Randall, and it wasn't the same Chavez. He wasn't as effective, and it just wasn't him. Samuel Peter. I mean, they tried to get him to start trying to box, and they were, oh, he 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 looks better. He, because he was just wild, and I felt like he's not a boxer, man. He's a brawler. He needed the type of trainers that was going to teach on to move his head, roll under shots, you know. Use his time and feints and not trying to make him, you know. Emmanuel Stewart was able to do it with Klitschko and with Lewis. But they knew how to box. They did know how to box. And it was to their advantage because they're tall fighters. And Emmanuel Stewart had them using that jab and movement and keeping that distance and working off of the jab. So that is not changing them. It's adding to what they already had. Um... Deontay Wilder, though, he, he's just not a good boxer, man, and he doesn't use his strengths. I don't even think he knows what his strengths are, just his right hand. So what does it matter who comes in to help train him if he's not going to listen? And that's the best thing that can happen to him by being trained by anyone is that he listens and that he's comfortable with implementing what he learned in the ring because when your natural instincts kick in, that wild stuff he does and leaning his head back and, you know, just stepping straight back. He had, I don't even think he has the legs to dance and move. I don't think he can do that. The guy said he doesn't even jog. And if you think about it, he's never, they talk about his athleticism. What athleticism does Deontay Wilder um, display? Now, this is not me saying these things to bash the guy. I'm just saying what I see and what everybody else pretty much that's unbiased, you see it. But at the end of the day, I don't think he has the tools mentally and psychologically to absorb these things and even have the confidence that he can go out and do it and actually make it work 34 man i, I think that 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 his his it, it, he's just setting his ways and he'll probably try to be a little more aggressive try to throw more punches we'll see we'll see at the end of the day whatever he learns different from what he's doing now to add to what he knows now We'll see if it if it happens. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll see. But personally, I just think as long as he's in an easy fight with someone who tries to stay away from him and afraid of the right hand, yeah.
they could put him in a fight with a person like that and 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 and, and maybe make him look good and then say Deontay about Wilder's wow, back better than ever and then people yo you see how Deontay looked and now it's hyped. Now they want to see him fight Joshua even more now or you know from what I understand he's fighting Fury in a rematch so uh in in that third fight so honestly I don't think. There's nothing he can do different against Fury except knock Fury out. That's it. And basically, when you know how to box, you can switch things up. That's why Fury, Fury to me, saw in that, in, in that fight. You know, when I come at Deontay, he has nothing. When I stand back and wait and counterpunch, even though I'm winning the fight and he's not able to get to me as much as he would like to, I'm giving him more of, of, of a chance to stay in this fight. But if I come at him, put this weight on him, come at him, smother his shots, because Deontay has no defense. So he saw something that helped him, and that's what I believe, especially even after he got knocked down and got up and then come back and he starts winning the damn round. And, you know, we know all know what happened in that, but I think because Fury can box, he's looking forward to adding things to his to his arsenal. You know, he's walked a couple of fighters down before. People say, I've heard people say he's never, no, he, he walked a couple of people down. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. You know, Steve Cunningham is one of them. And it doesn't make sense to say, well, he's a smaller guy. Yeah, he's a smaller guy. Deontay's a smaller guy too. So what? You know, he's done it before. Um, we're not used to seeing Fury fight aggressive with constantly coming forward like that. But Styles make fights. We know that. And in this situation, he saw, because Deontay does not have the ability to adjust and do something different from what he's already doing. He just has, he's a one-trick pony. AJ was able to get up, come back in the rematch and fight different. I don't care how much criticism he, he gets. He did what he had to do to win. When Ali did it, y'all praised Ali for doing it. You praised Sugar Ray Leonard for doing it. You know, certain others, you praised Ray Robinson for dancing and, and you know, you know, whatever. Um, At the end of the day, I just think Wilder, he has to listen. He has to believe in what's going on, but it's not going to be easy to get a guy to just add the things that he needs because he pretty much needs everything because it has to come together in the ring and the fight when the fight gets tough, not just put him in there with some meatball and then he looks good and, and then have him thinking that, okay, see, yeah, I know, um, but we'll see. Anyway, um, that's all I'm going to say on this video. Catch you all on the next one.